Well, hi, good morning. Hey, thanks for joining me in my shop. I think this will be the second video on these uh, tape recorders, really about this one here. This is the one that's that's working really well. If you watched the last video, you know that. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I noticed the volume control was dirty, no surprise. And you can also see that a lot of dirt has gone down in here. looks like somebody's spilled something into the switch so the switch is really really sticky so I think I need to take this apart enough to clean up the volume control and maybe a few other odds and ends and once we get it apart oh then we can uh, pull it out of there so that's what I wanted there pop, the, pop my tape out before something bad happens so taking this apart is a pretty easy deal screws on the back have arrows pointing at them to tell you what what screws to undo makes it a little bit, a bit challenging to get it wrong it's good Sometimes screws and these older plastic uh, electronics go down into a post, a plastic post that's been molded into the uh, into the uh, cabinet. That post, as years go goes by, all the plastic gets more and more brittle. Seems to be the case anyway. Sometimes when you go to back the screw out, or more importantly, drive it back in, you just snap the post off. So I don't want that to happen, but. You know, let's start these by hand. If I start them by hand, I can feel better what's going on. Find my, oops, my favorite screwdriver here, favorite Phillips. So I'm just making sure these break free. Hear that? See, there's a lot of uh, stickiness in there. And that one's a little easier. in the handle here. Okay, all felt pretty good. Let's get them out of there now. These screws might all not all be the same length. Uh, make sure I follow the pattern. So far they all look identical. I'm putting them on my bench in the same pattern they're in. the same too. Also the same. Okay, so that's not really a concern with this. These three obviously will be different. All that noisy here is my cat in the next room. Oh, it's gone quiet. That's even worse. <laughs> I look in there, all I see are uh, guilty eyes looking back. I missed a screw here. Okay, now it's not necessarily simple 
get this apart. Sometimes there can be a screw hidden in here. There's nothing there. Sometimes things like the antenna here, which has to be electrically connected inside somehow. We have a wire off the back, uh, which we have to watch out for. Sometimes these are tricky to get over little plugs like that. This looks simple. This looks easy. one part comes off and leaves all the works behind but it looks like it doesn't quite look like that in here. Now I have no idea what's going to happen when I pull this apart there could be you know I don't know there could be this is scary a little bit scary could be some stuff that it's really hard to get back together that's that's my concern here. If it comes apart easy enough I'll feel it. yeah that's my cat in the background going on here. It looks like the radio dial is coming up with the... No, maybe not. Uh, did I miss a screw? I don't think so. It seems to be held, held in over here a little bit. to be attached to this piece, not to this piece. Let me get my uh, priors here. Now there can be little plastic uh, clips and grippers and little things in here. Um, Hangs. Oh. Okay, kind of. Now, if it comes completely, all that, and then how do you like that? It comes right off. A little spring thing here. That'd be for the door. sometimes sticks. There's nothing to it. It's just a it's just plastic stuff put together here. There's no you know there's no uh, nothing fancy in this. Wow. There's no metal parts, there's no uh, hinges, there's no there's nothing there, so we'll put that off to the side. And here we are. We got it. Ooh, busy looking guy when you look in there. There's a ch big chip inside here. This is not very old at all. There's a looks like a sliding switch here. That's uh, that's the one that's sticking up here. It's just got a plastic linkage over to the switch. Oh, this whole top piece is. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey, that's ready to fall out. Uh, lubrication. This is the uh, this is the tuning knob. Getting fingerprints where I shouldn't get fingerprints. 
sometimes stuff like this is on a plug you can unplug but this one looks like it's way up under there okay I gotta apologize for this camera. It's, it focus has gone unstable on it, so if it starts focusing and focusing, I apologize. I'm not always watching the screen while I'm doing this. I'm most of the time I'm looking at the item directly. So if stuff happens on the screen, I miss it. Okay, let's see if we can get this piece off of here. Again, get these off, uh, you know, uh, a little bit of leverage here, a little bit of stress and strain, and crack. Something breaks, you're done. Well, you're not necessarily completely done, but better to spend a lot of time just wiggling it around. I'd like to take it off because of cleaning advantages here. Especially this white piece right down in here. But you know, maybe I've got it apart enough. Maybe that's enough. If it's not coming off easy, then maybe, you know, what I'll do, I'll just keep applying more and more and more until suddenly something bad happens. So I'll stop that. There's another sliding switch here. This guy fall out again. all over the place. Okay, let's set this let's set this over here like that. Okay, so the a couple of things I can do here. Uh, one is uh, check and improve the lubrication in the mechanism for the tape drive, um, clean it, doesn't look dirty at all, looks great, I don't think there's any cleaning needed, clean the uh, uh, visible parts uh, of the unit that are hard to get at when it's all together, these buttons here, and uh, what else would I do when I'm in here, make, make sure the volume control is cleaned. Do not want to lift any more out of here. I don't want to take take this unit out or anything. It's just uh, just going a little too far. Don't know why I would really want to do that. It would almost certainly introduce quite a risk. Here's the antenna connection right in here. This little tiny board here. So you see, uh, they, like you know, th these things swing around. So there has to be a slip type electrical connection, a slipping sliding connection, um, which is prone to trouble. This looks just fine. You know, I, I almost put money down that no one's ever pulled this antenna off of here. Good. I think we're good. There's the uh, AM loop antenna hidden right in here. So it definitely has a loop antenna. Of course it would. And uh, here's where the power goes in, and sometimes this will come loose on the board, but I don't think there's anything about it here that's loose. The owner has told me the plan is to run this on batteries anyway. Now I turn this over, it's all going to fall apart. Oh, come right on. So let me look and see. Wow, batteries go way up there. Really? Wow. One, two, what the heck? 
I, you just never know when you're going to see something strange. Now, can you read the numbers in there? Each each battery. Oh, I, I know why they're numbered the way they're numbered. I'll just tell you what. It's numbered. There's four battery symbols sitting in there. It's really hard to see. There, there you can kind of see them there. And they're numbered one, two, four, three. And I know from my experience, if you put a three in and then try to stick the last, the ender in last, you're going to have a lot of trouble. It's better to stick like two that way, one this way, and then squeeze open the gap, stick the last battery in the middle of the other batteries. And that's what they're trying to show here. C batteries, four C batteries. It says it right there. There's no sign of any battery leakage, any battery damage. Maybe this was never run with batteries. Maybe it was almost never run. That's probably closer to the truth right there. Okay, so uh, lubrication in here it has to be silicone. It's not silicone. It's synthetic. It has to be a synthetic lubricant. Not silicone, though. Now, before I start sticking it on there, where, where should it go? So I can see some up in here. Yeah, for that part. So it's all over the place under there. Look, there's parts here that look like they're ready to fall out if I tip it the wrong way. Sometimes you have parts like this, and when the cabinet is on and it's holding it in, you take the cabinet off, whatever was holding something in is no longer holding it. Turn it upside down, here's something fall on your floor, you don't even know what it was or where it came from. So we need to be a little bit careful about that. So the lubric like there still is a little bit of lubrication in there. Um, these guys probably don't need any or want any lubrication. And the plastic itself is a slippery surface. Surface, so I don't. Yeah, there might have been a little touch of it on there. Let's see if we can't get a closer look at that. One second here while I switch to my close-up camera. Um, just hang on, bear with me here. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay. Come on down from the sky, camera. Let's take a close look at these things here. Question is, was there lubrication on that before? That's the question. Sure looks like it. A little bit of orangey yellow stuff in there. Teeny tiny amount on. Let's also take a look at the uh, head here. It looks. So I'm looking for little bits of buildup of the tape. Not straight uh, on the center line of the head, but a little to the left or the right, uh, where junk tends to build up. I see a little wee bit there, but nothing. Looks great. I don't think this has got much mileage on it at all. What about this guy? Yeah, it all looks good. Uh, that turns very freely. 
motor itself is kind of, you can see a bit of it there. That gray thing down there is the motor. Uh, I'm not going to be able to get at it, I don't think. And that's another possible lubrication point, but I, I don't think I can get at it. It's that little hole there. That hole. Is that where you... Uh, that's just about dead center of the uh, motor spindle, but I'm not... I, you know, I could drip oil down there, but I don't know what I'm doing, so I won't. Take another look at this. Is this really... got grease on it. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I can see a little bit on that gear to the right. I think, or is that just light? Yeah, I think these all got hit with a little touch of grease, so I'll follow suit. Okay. Put too much in here. Okay, so I'm looking for other sliding surfaces, just, just like in a record player. So there's a spot. No. Couldn't find the grease there from that. in my hand. Okay, what else is moving here? Got some metal parts moving against each other over here. So this is the, uh, you can see the actual record blocking mechanism. Or There's no tape inside right now. So this plunger is, is it, when the tape goes in, this plunger gets moved like that. Okay, but only if the tab is still there. So this tape goes in, pushes that. If you break that tab out, then it won't push on this. If it doesn't push on this, can you see that? Yeah. This little piece here blocks this metal from coming forward. So you cannot push it into record. Unless you have a tape in it with the tab in place, then this is lifted, then you can go into record. Very simple stuff, eh? Odd that they here where the metal is dragging over plastic, they've they've got lots of lubrication. Here they haven't bothered with it. Well it's metal over metal. And you can kind of feel it kind of grinding in there. Why 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 not lubricate all this? Why not? Why would they not? There's lots of grease around here. If they're worried about the grease wandering, it's, it's just tons of it here to wander. Why, why would they not bother with it? 
<laughs> this is driving me nuts. It's all because I can feel when I push that button down. I can, I can, I can feel the. Uh, I can feel a lot of stuff happening there. Lots of little parts moving over here. Especially the the final lock, the, the the thing that's holding the button in now, and then I release it with this button. It's worth finding out where that's happening. So I'm watching here. I think it's happening underneath where I can't see it. Sometimes there's a release bar running across all these buttons. I need to press them. They 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 uh, they go past the release bar, and the release bar clicks into place and holds it. And you work the release bar by pushing one of these controls, like this one. It'll flip the bar, twist it, move it, do something to this bar, and release all the buttons. Of course, only the one that's pushed down. That's probably what's happening underneath this plastic piece here. I mean, we should see something sliding this way when I work this control. And then it would probably be spring retracted. I see there's a spring retracting this control, or this button, right here. And I'd expect something else to be sliding across under. I don't see any movement anywhere. So enough of that. Now here's some metal here, and there's a little lubrication under it. Metal on metal with lubrication. I had, I had missed it. I hadn't really moved each button. So why, so why not lubricate that other part? Now the the slide bar, uh, the um, locking bar, can be released, if you like, by any one of these buttons. You push any button, and, and it's the first time you're pushing it, it's, it's doing something to this locking release bar, which we can't see. Just watching all the mechanisms move in there. Let's try that. What do you think? Think that's better? Yeah, I think that looks better, doesn't it? How about I do this? thing here. Doesn't look like it really grabs anything. Okay, back to this metal area over here. Why? And it's hard for, you know, when I push on it, it's... And I gotta take off the release here. Well, I'm gonna dab that with a little bit of oil. A little bit of grease. That's my plan. Okay, got anything on the actual plate there? screaming, don't do that, Jim, that's terrible, what you've done. I don't think so.
feels better. Still feels a little grippy. Good, feels good. guys right in the center get a little tiny dab now what about the threads themselves or the uh, uh, not the threads the um, gear I don't see any hint of lubrication in the actual gear or gear teeth I think that's it. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there's too much more I want to put any. I don't want to put any lubrication around here because it may get on the tape. Okay. As long as I stand here with this uh, grease in my hand, I'm going to be looking for places to stick it. So I'm going to get rid of the grease here. Good. So that was a question of just cleaning stuff up, getting into all the little nookies and crannies, and uh, put it back together. Great. Oh, I just walked into my shop here and started fooling around, and I managed to get this off pretty quick, and then realized, hey, I should really have the video running while I'm doing this. <laughs> so the way I got this off, I push these two buttons in which were interfering the most and then I just kind of worked it around very gently and out it came. This gives me a great chance to clean all this stuff which is why it's so uh, useful to get this get this apart. Look at that, fantastic. Okay cleanup time. Okay, it's all cleaned up. Time now to put it back together. Wait a minute. No, it's not. Time to clean the contacts inside here. The volume control, which was a little noisy. And, uh, and these, these large slide switches that are in here. Let's see one right here hole right on the top. Give it a little bit of a blast to kind of shoot the stuff in. That's the other slide switch up there. Okay, volume control. Maybe this guy right here. So I'm gonna spray the WD-40 in where the leads come out because it's it's open there. That should be all it takes. Needed to do that with two slide switches. Is there another slide switch in there? Nothing I can really get at. See, there's a pair of wires right there rising up into. switch. Yeah, I don't think it's anything we want to spray stuff in. There is a belt in there. Just a 
above this wheel there's a belt so that's what's going on with the other the other machine the belt is broken in it or it's fallen off that's possible too but broken is a little more likely okay now let's see this was quite tricky to get this together so this is the slide part like this. This must go like no, it's going here. There we are. Push these two. Lock those in, get them a little more out of the way. This is only going to work with a little bit of forcing, which I don't like doing, but take much to get it out so it shouldn't take much to get it in. There we go. Exactly how that happened I don't know. <laughs> Suddenly it went. There we are, that's on the switch. Good. Next part is, uh, if I remember right, it's just the whole cover going on. Hmm. I did. I didn't. I didn't, uh, I didn't look at cleaning this. It's really in very good shape. No children been after this, so no problem. I can put this back together and we can clean it up a little bit afterwards. Let me turn this around this way. fit over these uh, ear pieces here, the uh, ear uh, headphone or microphone plugs they didn't make. There. There we go. Okay, that's, I'm sure that's in the right spot there. No, there's a volume, no, this guy. alignment issue here. Oh, ho, ho, ho. The pointer, did I move the pointer at all? You see the bottom threads drive the tuner, and the upper threads drive the pointer. Uh, let's see, if I turn it this way, all the way, that's this thing, all the way this way. Give that a try. That's one part that's definitely lubricated. And this was difficult to get apart here too. Again, oh, did we get this right? Looks pretty good. Drop 
on. I need a volume control. Volume tuning, it's all there. Going in, settling down nice over here. There can be some clips and things like that you need to overcome. Oh, that went down really nice. Fantastic. Looks like it's all together everywhere. So all I got to do is just. Pile in the screws here. And we'll give it a go. Okay, set these down with the power driver and then check them with the manual screwdriver here. Try not to tighten them all the way. I'm going around the second second time. That's what I'm doing here. Because I just find, especially with plastic stuff, a uh, handheld screwdriver is the only way to control these uh, screws. Yeah, good. They're all good. Good, good, good. Nice and clean up on the top here now. Oh, oh, oh. Volume control. Tuning. Good. What do you say we plug it in? What do you say we don't? See where we're set to tape. Okay. So we'll uh, we'll play this on the radio here. AM radio first. Not to worry about all that. Crummy noise, FM. That's that mystery signal in my shop, right around 100. Thought I figured that out, didn't I figure that out? You gotta be a little bit close to a radio station. Or you gotta take a chance and raise the antenna back here, which I'm not gonna do myself. And now, tape. Tape. What do I do with my tape? Here it is, right here. Tape. And first, rewind. That was fast forward. Fast forward, rewind, play. Hey, here's Tchaikovsky. Sounds pretty good, actually. Wonderful. That's it. She is finished. This, this, <laughs> this should have been installed while it was apart. This might be just a little tricky to do here. It's got a little, little hingy bumps here on the edge. It's a pretty solid plastic. Don't make me take this all apart again. Didn't loosen 
off at all. It doesn't seem to matter what I do. Let me loosen them all. Because I think this is so chunky, this box here, that even with one screw holding it down, it's going to be hard to pry up. There we go. And my poor computer uh, fan speeding up and slowing down. I'm not sure why it's doing that. It doesn't normally do that. Maybe uh, some dust is built up in it or something. There it is. I give you my first Sony. Actually, that's my second Sony, but uh, fantastic. It's in great shape. Uh, this is going to be in the hands of a uh, of a child whose father, I believe, owned this one. I think. And Grandpa's doing them both a favor here. Going to supply. Uh, It'd be lots of fun. I could just see it. Uh, Dad and his daughter with this thing. Anyway, that's it for my first Sony. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.